So researchers will select samples of populations to make sure that they are studying the right people. They won't research the whole of the population because it would take too long, cost far too much. So they use a sampling frame to select people to participate in their studies. So today we uh, will revise PetVorg and how we use that to evaluate methods. And then we're going to move on to look at different sampling frame examples, how sampling frames are used, and then evaluate the effectiveness of the sampling frames in order to make research really representative in, for, an, for us to be able to generalise it to the rest of the population. So just a reminder that PetVorg is the way that we evaluate studies and in our previous lesson we learnt these keywords and how they're used to evaluate things. So here are a series of questions you can read through to consider how you would evaluate. So in order to get a representative sample, a sample of people who represent the population that you're studying, um, you need to use a sampling frame. So if we look at these three examples I've given you, you had to consider, has an appropriate group that represents the target population been chosen? So in order to study the area that we're looking at, have we actually chosen a, the, the right people who will be able to give their opinions on what we're looking for? And also, can we then think about applying what they say to the rest of the population? So the first example, asking five students from each year group at Brentside High School how they think the toilet should be redesigned. So if we take five students from each year group from the school in which we are trying to design the toilets for, um, it's probably quite a good representation of that particular society, that particular population. So the population at Brentside High School, we get five students from each year group to say how they think it should be redesigned. So we could apply those people's opinions to the rest of the population at Brentside. However, we couldn't then generalise that to all schools and say that that is everybody in every single school's opinion about how toilets should be designed. Thinking about uh, the next one, asking people um, that researchers see in Greenford High Street what they think of teaching at Brentside High School. So this is where researchers just pick a few people at random from Greenford High Street and say, oh, how do you think the teaching is at Brentside? It's not an appropriate group. We haven't got a representative sample. By chance, the researchers might ask someone who either goes to the school or has some knowledge about the school, but it's quite unlikely that they would give us a really good answer. Um, additionally, we can't generalise that to anything because it's really only a few people's opinion and they might actually uh, not be particularly useful because they might not know anything about it. And then the final one here, asking Mr Jones why he thinks GCC results were so good last year. Um, it's not a sample, it's just one person. Um, it might be something that you do uh, a particular focus on. Um, but you would need to be asking lots of other people. So you'd need to choose a particular sampling frame to, ch to select people from the rest of the school. Um, there are different ways that we sample. We might use um, different sampling frames. And we're going to look at those in a second. But it's really important to make sure that the findings we have are representative by using a sampling frame. You might be asked um, the difference between a sample and a sampling frame. The frame is through which you choose and select your, your target population to participate and the sample is simply uh, the group or the population that you've chosen. So you were asked to read through different examples. You were given lots of different examples of sampling in your notes and you had to fill in the grid. Um, so for example, you can have a sampling method that is random. Simple random sampling, that is literally like taking the name out of a hat, although you wouldn't do it that arduously these days. You can use random number generators where people's names have a particular number allocated to them. So if we were looking at Brentside High School, we might number every single person's name and then select them out of a hat. And again, this just stops everybody choosing people that they might know or people that they uh, would like to answer their, their study or maybe people whose names they particularly like or don't like. Um, it just means that people have an equal chance of getting selected. However, um, you, it's not particularly representative because you might get the same type, the same type of person each time. Um, unusual, but it could happen. So you might accidentally pick out all girls to answer uh, because it's just completely random who you choose. So it's good because everyone has an equal chance of being selected, but it's not representative of the population um, to, uh, to a full extent because you could 
accidentally select the same type of people. It can be quite time consuming, it can be quite difficult too. So you are asked to create this grid here. I'm just going to pick out a few here. So we might have um, one of my favourite snowball sampling, as you know, where uh, you know someone, let's say you're trying to find out about um, sports teams within schools. So you might be wondering how they how they get viewed by their peers. So you might go to the hockey team and ask everyone in the hockey team to respond to your questionnaire or take part in an interview. Then you might say to them, do you know anyone else in a, in a team that might participate in my study? And they go, yeah, yeah, here you go. And they give you a list and then you go and ask them. And that's the start of your snowball. You then, once you ask those people that you've been referred to, you might say to them, well, do you know anyone else that will participate? And then you go from there and you keep kind of expanding out and out and out. Um, it can be quite difficult because they might not know anybody who would participate. They might not want to give people's details. There are some ethical considerations there. Um, it's fairly representative because you're always getting people from that particular uh, society or population that you're looking into. However, um, it might not be representative because really you're only getting people on recommendation like a friend of a friend. It can be useful uh, for looking at a broad range of areas. It can be also useful for studying a target group that's quite hard to access. So let's say um, you were trying to find um, a particular group of students who had experienced bullying within school, negative teacher labelling, or were anti-school students who don't want to be asked. So you might be able to find out, um, or truancy is a good one as well, uh, you might want to find out about why people truant, and certainly snowball sampling would be good for that, because friends of a friend, they, they might trust you more. Um, so that, that would be the strength as well, finding out difficult sampling um, po sampling difficult populations but then the weaknesses would be that you might not be able to find the people that you need and so on so you've got this um, in your in your notes and you can have a look at it and, if, and, and ones that they would usually refer to are things like simple random sampling quota sampling probably stratified sampling and then and things like opportunity and volunteer sampling too um so we also then looked at a last task about being commissioned to find out why some ethnic minority groups achieve more highly than others and you were asked to consider a sampling frame that would be as suitable to get that sample of population and then evaluate it. Um, I think most of you chose um, simple random sampling, quota sampling or snowball sampling as, as appropriate methods for that. Um, and thinking about why researchers might deliberately choose a sampling frame which is not representative or generalizable, usually it comes down to practicality. So they they will accept um, defeat when it comes to representativeness or generalizability in some areas, partic particularly our qualitative sociologists who are quite happy to have a non-representative sample and just get that, that subjective experience of those people to make it slightly easier, um, but they kind of don't mind it if it's too subjective anyway. Uh, so here they all are again, and we played to be with it next lesson. So that's the end of looking at sampling frames for sociology, sociological studies.